Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 with Mr. Clausen. So today I want to talk about applications with dimensional analysis. And the reason that we're sliding this in here is that we just got done talking about algebraic expressions. And algebraic expressions utilizes a lot of skills where you're moving things around like variables and trying to find ways to get them to cancel out with each other so that you can create simpler expressions and then use them in more meaningful ways. And dimensional analysis ties in really nicely to this and it also gives us some ability to apply to real world circumstances which we're going to use in one of the labs that we're going to talk about here in the near future. So big reason that we're kind of introducing this now and talking about this a little bit. And it isn't anything that you've probably never done before, but just kind of reviewing it. And so we're going to look at dimensional analysis to do some basic metric to standard unit conversions and look at just how it is utilized in a very nice visual context. We'll also look at dimensional analysis from with simple SI unit changes. So this would be from, you know, millimeters and meters or grams to kilograms, that type of thing as well as how to deal with it mathematically when you have a squared or cubed power of something, so whether it's an area or a volume, as well as a real world example. So I have a lot to get through, I'm gonna go through this quickly, but the main idea here is that if you wanna go and you wanna switch something from centimeters to inches, well you need to know the conversion factor between centimeters and inches in order to do dimensional analysis. So this would be something I would give you in a math class, I'm not expecting you to memorize these, what I want to know is can you do the mathematical setup and can you map and then go and perform dimensional analysis. So what I mean by that is that, you know, if you want to make a path, you know, we want to go from centimeters to inches, we have a conversion factor. This is a conversion factor. That's a one to one conversion factor. So one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters that allows us to make this switch. And so simply put, if you're going from centimeters to inches, you need one conversion factor. We have one conversion factor. So 154 centimeters. And what you do is you create a fraction. And since these are equal to each other, what I'm going to do is if I put 2.54 centimeters on the bottom and one inch on top, this is a one to one ratio. So that allows me to do that. And how I determine what goes on the bottom and what goes on top is I always put on the bottom what I want to cancel because centimeters over centimeters, think of this as like a variable X, cancels out and then what you want to keep is on top. And you do a basic calculation and what you will find is that this is equal to 60.6 inches. And then you have this really practical answer. Same thing from feet to centimeters. Now a little bit of difference from feet to centimeters is that you probably need to do one more step here. So I would go from feet to inches and then inches to centimeters. So since I have two arrows, this is what I would call a map of my dimensional analysis. And I need two conversion factors. So I can just tell you now that, that 12 inches is equal to one foot. All right. And that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So the exact same process here. So I'm going to start with this 116 feet and I'm going to go through these two conversion factors. So it's going to look like this. And I'm going to plug one conversion factor in one and one conversion factor in another. Now I want to go from feet to inches. So I'm going to use this conversion factor. So for every one foot, I'm going to put the foot in the bottom so it cancels. I'm going to put 12 inches on top so that I switch to units of inches. And now do I have a conversion factor that goes from inches to centimeters? I so happen to, that I do have a conversion factor that goes from inches to centimeters. So now I can say one inch. 2.54 centimeters and now all I do is I'm going to take 116 and then multiply it by everything in the numerator and divide it by everything in the denominator well the denominators are one so we'll go 116 times 12 times 2.54 and you should find that this is going to equal 3535.7 centimeters and hopefully that's relatively simple and straightforward as far as thinking about how to do standard to metric conversions. Now, if you're dealing with just basic SI units, so from like millimeters to meters, well, I'm just going to tell you what these are. So if I am dealing with a millimeter, there is exactly 1000 millimeters to one meter. 
Now, when you get to chemistry or physics, like this would be something I would just expect you to know. So if we're looking at this and I want to go from millimeters to meters, we can use this conversion factor. Millimeters to meters is just one step. And we can go 351 millimeters and just set up the conversion factor. Put 1,000 millimeters on the bottom, one meter on top. Millimeters will cancel, right? Do the math, and what you should find is that if you take 351 and you divide it by 1,000 and multiply it by 1, that's maybe a little frivolous, but what you should get is 0 0.351 meters. And the same concept applies here. Now, I can tell you that 1,000 grams goes into 1 kilogram, and again, the same idea is applied here. So 3.14 kilograms. Right? I'm going to put one kilogram in the bottom because that's what I want to cancel with this numerator and denominator. You know, you can just think of this as 3.14 over 1. And we have 1,000 grams in the numerator here. And so we're going to take this, multiply it by 1,000, and this should give us 3,140 grams of whatever this is. All right, so hopefully you can see just how dimensional analysis sort of works and how you can cancel things and come up with these new useful values that you might actually use in the real world. So now when you're dealing with squared and cubed powers, again, just trying to go through a little bit of everything here. And let's say that a modest sized house has an area of 195 meters squared. What is the area in centimeters squared? Now, this isn't as simple as going 195 and just multiplying it by 100 because this is a squared value. So for example, if we have 195 meters squared, and now we can say, for example, that from meters to centimeters, that there's 100 centimeters in one meter. All right, and I'll just tell you that. I can even give you that on a quiz or an exam, or and if I forget, you can just ask me for it. I'll give that to you unless it's chemistry or physics, then you're on your own. But what we're going to do here is we're going to say one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Now, notice that these are not the same. And so what you have to do is you have to use the same conversion factor twice. And so we're going to go 100 centimeters all over one meter. And that way, this will get rid of the power, but then this will get rid of the other one. And now we'll be able to go centimeters times centimeters on top. And what you'll get is 100 times 100 is actually 10,000. And then 10,000 times 195 is just simply going to be 1951234 centimeters squared. So what you have to do is you have to take that conversion factor and multiply it twice. Another way that if you ever look this up online, you might actually see it written out like this instead where you go 100 centimeters over one meter and then you just square that whole thing. That's a way that you can write it out as well. But that's how you would find the area. Volume, same thing. So if you want to say something like a bedroom has a volume of 115 meters cubed, and you want to switch it to centimeters cubed, same conversion factor. Again, the idea here is that you'll have to go one meter and 100 centimeters. Put the meters on the bottom because that's what you're trying to cancel. But you have to do this conversion factor three times in order to get the desired effect. Because you'll go one, one, two, two, Three, and then you'll go 115 times 100 times 100 times 100. So that'll be once you do all the math is 115 million centimeters cubed that you're going to get as a response for this particular problem. Now the real world example I want to look at I want to show you how to create a map and look at some of that as well. And so the problem I have here is I have a European automobile has a gas mileage of 14 kilometers per liter. What is the gas mileage in miles per gallon? So we got some different units here and we got to create a map. 
and you might need some conversion factors. This is something you could Google, I suppose, but I'll tell you that there is 3.78 liters. This is equal to one gallon, so that's one conversion factor that you would use. The other one is that one mile, one MI, is equal to 5,280 feet. Um, you know, let's say you need to go from the one inch to 2.54 centimeters. That's another conversion factor you may need at your disposal, you know, 12 inches to one foot. And let's also say, you know, 1000 meters to one kilometer. And I suppose you'll also need to know that there is a hundred centimeters in one meter. So let's say I give you all these. So there's potentially six steps that you have to do in order to, you know, figure out this process and where you want to go with it. So if you're going from kilometers per liter, you know, let's go and let's switch it to you know, meters per liter, and then let's switch it to centimeters per liter, and then centimeters to inches per liter. And if you want to just do the top at once and then look at the bottom of the second set of steps, that's fine. But I'm just looking at this and going, well, what can I go from one thing to another without just having Google do everything for me. And again, part of the reason I'm doing that and I'm asking you to think about this now is that once we get the function notation, we can actually look at, hey, how could this actually be made? And now let's go miles per liter. And then the last step of going to miles per gallon. All right, and this is what we would call a map. Now, I'm not gonna give you a problem that has six separate conversion factors that have to be used. But again, part of what I want to do here is get a little bit of a viewpoint of how you would map a dimensional analysis problem and then how you would execute that dimensional analysis problem using the mapping at your disposal. So examples, we start off with a problem that has 14 kilometers per liter. Well, how do we switch from kilometers Per liter to meters per liter. Well, you just go for every kilometer, there's 1,000 meters. And then you could say for every one meter, there's 100 centimeters. Notice that every single one of these factors I've put in so far is a one to one ratio. There's 100 centimeters in a meter. So there isn't any changing to this value that's occurring. All we're doing is we're changing the units. We're algebraically kind of manipulating all this as we go along and just canceling a variable, but just in the format of a unit. Now, centimeters to inches, there's 2.54 centimeters in one inch. There is 12 inches in one foot. There is 5,280 feet in one mile and then last but not least the maybe a little bit of a tricky part here is kind of thinking about okay I'm following 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 sweet I got these units up here but I gotta get gallons on the bottom and so you kind of have to invert a little bit but I want to cancel liters and liters is always already on the bottom here so I'm gonna actually say 3.78 liters on top over one gallon and then this liters will cancel with that. And the only two units I have left that I haven't crossed out yet are the units that I was aiming for to begin with. So if I wanna know the answer to this question, I'm just gonna go and say 14, and I'm gonna multiply it by everything in the numerator and divide it by everything in the denominator. So I'll go 14 times 1,000 times 100 times 3.78, cause I can just skip the ones that say one. And now I'm going to divide it by 2.54, and then I'm going to divide it by 12, and then I'll divide it by 5,280. And once I do all that, what I will get is a number that is equal to 
eight miles per gallon. And that seems realistic with what we know about automobiles. You know, and if you're thinking about how much a kilometer is in relation to a mile and a liter is in relation to a gallon, you know, you can probably think through and estimate that that is a realistic value. You know, if you had 4,000 miles per gallon, you might just, you know, double check, think about it as far as how you're going to progress through it. But this is how you use dimensional analysis and you can just go and cancel out these units as you go. So think about the units as like a variable, something that can just be canceled out within a given expression in order to find some other values. So hopefully this gave you a nice review of dimensional analysis if you haven't seen it in a while. And with that said, let's do some math.